We have another dazzling display of aurora all around the globe from a major solar storm. An activity begins to return Earthside as a string of active regions survives its backside passage and begins to light up the east limb of the sun. Those stories and more in the news this week. Hi, I'm Tam with the Scove. The sun has been extremely flare quiet this week, but it's been popping off filament eruptions pretty much everywhere. In fact, this west limb eruption is probably on its way to hitting Rosetta right about now. The big story this week, though, has been these coronal holes. And you can see this one down here. It's pretty dark and ominous. This gave us a huge G3 class solar storm just this week. And this one here is planning on hitting us right about now, maybe within the next day or so. And it should be in bringing up activity for us uh, just a little bit. But the real story here is actually the brightness that we see on the east limb right now. This is the beginning of a whole string of active regions that have kind of lit up the backside. So we expect expect over the next few days to a week that we're going to start seeing more of this, which will increase our flux, increase our chance for earthward directed solar storms, and increase our flare risk. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see the last time we actually had an M-class flare was back on the 4th, and since then flux has pretty much taken a nosedive as all of the active regions, just like Elvis, has left the building and have gone around the backside. But we should start seeing activity pick up again here in the next couple days as more of these regions rotate back on or into Earth view, and uh, we should expect that these flux levels will begin to rise just a little bit. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see at the beginning of October we were reasonably quiet. We popped over storm level a couple times, but then, can you see where the actual solar storm hit? Bam! Look at that. That is amazing. We were actually in the red for two whole days, and we popped up to a G3 level. That's a KP of 7. So it really rattled the Earth's shield, and it took a long time for the Earth's shield to calm down. You can see we had active conditions for more than another day or so. We still haven't calmed completely down. And you know what? We're going to get hit again here in the next day, so we may not see quiet conditions before we ramp back up again. So that solar storm brought us some amazing aurora. Here's a recap from Orvation. It's our uh, aurora prediction model. You can see the Australia got some amazing aurora, UK got some amazingly strong aurora, and then right before it was about to hit the United States, it just turned off. We did get a little bit of an intensification at, over the United States, but for the most part, it was the UK that got the show, and I will give you the highlights now. So this solar storm was so amazing, there was so much aurora all over the world that it made the news in multiple countries. And it went from sustained to like pulsating aurora, which is a totally different phenomenon. But to start the show off, here is some aurora from ABC Australia. They have a gorgeous uh, blog that they've got about it that shows multiple locations in Victoria, Australia, and also in Tasmania. Now we also had aurora in Lithuania. We had purple aurora in Norway. We had aurora in Haas, the UK. We had amazing aurora in Lanark, Scotland, and this made the news in multiple uh, journals and periodicals and newspapers. We had aurora in North Ireland, and this was pulsating aurora. We had people writing blogs about how strange it was to see pulsating aurora compared to the sustained curtains that they saw. We had aurora in North U or Yorkshire, we had it in Elon Valley, Wales. We also had amazing aurora in Cumbria. And of course, aurora in Iceland. And now moving to the Western Hemisphere, we had aurora in Ontario, in Edmonton, Alberta, in Saskatchewan, and then down in the United States, aurora made it as far south as Colorado, which I'm not showing this time, but I can usually show that one. But we had beautiful pictures in Maine, also in Virginia. We had coronas in North Dakota. And we have the beautiful aurora in Minnesota. And this time lapse captures where the aurora went from sustained curtains into the pulsating aurora that had to do with substorms and a totally different phenomena when the solar storm is kind of calming down.
So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And remember that huge string of active regions I was talking about earlier? Well, here they are. You can see the backside is just littered with activity. We've got solar storms ripping off, we've got some flare activity going on, and it's just very crazy complicated. So all of this stuff is now beginning to rotate Earth's side, and over the next probably two weeks, we're going to start seeing more activity with a higher flare risk and maybe even some earthward directed solar storms. Returning to the disk, you can see it's an entirely different story, Earth side. We only have three active regions on the Earth-facing disk right now, and they're pretty quiet. So actually, this is going to be the beginning of the string of active regions that's rotating onto the Earth-facing disk. So expect that the solar flux will increase, and that's going to help you amateur radio operators get more propagation in the ionosphere. But also, we will have an increased risk for uh, M-class flares and possibly some Earth-directed solar storms coming in this next week. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that high speed stream coming from that coronal hole I mentioned earlier. NOAA is expecting active conditions with about a 60% chance of a major storm at high latitudes. At mid latitudes, we're only expecting about a 25% chance for a minor storm, uh, with those conditions continuing into the next couple days or so, and then things should quiet back down, because we aren't anticipating any other solar storms at this time. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook for the coming week, we are still sitting at a very low M flare risk right now, but as these regions begin to rotate back onto the east limb, we are anticipating that the M flare risk will increase because we have seen some flaring activity on the backside. So I'm expecting that NOAA will raise us to a 50% level, maybe a little bit higher over the coming days. It all depends upon what these regions do. So this looks to be another exciting week in space weather. We just got down from that huge uh, solar storm that we had this past week and we're going to get yet another bump in conditions. So you poor amateur radio operators, you're going to have a little bit of a tough time over the next few days. And then if that active activity that's coming on the east limb gets, starts firing off M-class flares, then of course you're going to have to worry about radio blackouts. Now you GPS operators, you guys should be okay unless we're dealing with M-class flares, then you have to deal with some intermittent problems with your GPS signal as well. But that's not happening yet, so you guys should enjoy pretty much free reign. And then, of course, you, you uh, aurora photographers should be loving life right now. You had some amazing aurora shots. I've seen more th aurora than I can possibly uh, keep in my head here. And, and you get a, yet another chance. So uh, enjoy all of this activity. And I hope to see some more beautiful aurora photography. And uh, have a great time this week. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.